Hi! If you're looking for an SEO checklist to help you increase your site's organic traffic and ranking in Google, you've just found it. We've put together the definitive checklist you'll need to be successful in SEO in 2021, covering best practice information and tasks you need to be aware of. Watch this video to the end so you don't miss the best part. Let's not waste time and get started. Did you know 70 to 80% of users ignore paid ads focusing on organic results? From the basics of SEO to what you need to know when analyzing your off-page signals, use this as a guide to ensure that your site adheres to best practices and that you are not held back by issues you missed. The following items are mostly service tasks, but they form the foundation of a successful SEO strategy. Set up Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools. The Google Search Console is an important tool that provides you with invaluable information about your site's effectiveness, as well as a wealth of data you can use to increase your site's organic visibility and traffic. Bing Webmaster Tools is a similar platform that simply provides data and analytics for your search engine. These essential tools allow you to view search terms and keywords that users use to find your site in search results, submit sitemaps, detect crawl errors, and more. If you don't already have them, do it now and thank you later. Without the right data, you can make good decisions. Google Analytics is a free marketing analytics tool which allows you to view data and information about how many people are visiting your site, who they are, and how they interact with it. Google Analytics is pretty hard to beat, but there are some decent alternatives like Clicky. Just make sure you have a way to track regular search traffic and conversions. The first step is to install Google Analytics code on your site and familiarize yourself with basic SEO reports. The purpose of a sitemap is to help search engines decide which pages to crawl and which is the canonical version of each page. It's simply a list of URLs that define your site's core content to ensure it gets scrolled and indexed. A sitemap tells the search robot which files you think are important for your site and also provides valuable information about those files. For example, for pages, when the page was last updated, how often the page has changed, and any versions in other languages on the page. Google supports some different sitemap formats, but XML is the most commonly used. You can usually find your sitemap at domain.com. If you're using WordPress, you'll find that creating a sitemap is a standard feature. Otherwise, you can create an XML sitemap using one of the many sitemap creation tools available. Once you've created your sitemap, make sure it's submitted to Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools. Be sure to include a link to the sitemap in your robots.txt file. Create a robots.txt file. Simply put, your site's robots.txt file tells search engine crawlers about the pages and files that web scanners may or may not request from your site. It's most often used to prevent crawlers from crawling certain sections of your site and is not intended to be used as a way to de-index a web page and stop it from showing in Google. You can find your site's robots.txt file at domain.com. Make sure you already have it. If you don't, you need to create one, even if you don't currently need to prevent any web pages from being crawled. Several WordPress SEO plugins allow users to create and edit their robots.txt file, but if you are using a different CMS, you may need to manually create the file with the text editor and upload it to the root of your domain. Check Search Console for manual actions. On rare occasions, you may find that your site has been adversely affected by the imposition of manual action. Manual actions are usually caused by an apparent attempt 
to violate or manipulate Google's Webmaster guidelines. This includes things like user-generated spam, structured data issues, unnatural links, thin content, hidden text, and even what's called pure spam. Most sites are not and never will be affected by manual actions. However, you can check them in the Manual Actions tab in Google Search Console. You will get a notification if your site has been manually acted upon, but if you are working on a new project or doing a site, this should always be one of the first things you check. Make sure Google can index your website. It's not as rare as you think that a website actually can be indexed by Google. You'd be surprised to learn how often sudden website de-indexing is caused by developers accidentally leaving no index tags in place when moving code from the middle ground to the working environment. Just go ahead and start crawling. If this is blocked, search engines won't be able to crawl and index your site either. Double-checking that the main pages on your site should be indexed can be indexed can save a lot of troubleshooting problems if you find problems sometime later. Without a solid keyword research process, you can't rank for the right terms. And if you're not ranking for the right terms, your traffic won't convert at the rate it could. One of the fastest ways to start your keyword research is to find the terms that work for your competitors. In our opinion, time spent on competitor analysis will not be wasted. You need to know what your main money keywords are. In case you haven't guessed, these are the ones that will drive your leads, sales, and conversions. You will also find them as header terms and main page keywords. These are usually high-volume, highly competitive keywords that really summarize what you are offering on a topic or category level. You can use the Keyword Review tool to do keyword research related to your products and services and identify key terms. Did you know? 50% of search users start their search from a mobile device, and that percentage will only grow. Find a long-tail keyword options. A keyword strategy without long-tail keywords is not a keyword strategy. Long-tail keywords, while usually smaller in length than headword keyword, provide a higher conversion rate. You need to make sure that your SEO strategy is targeting long-tail keyword variants as well as core terms, both in terms of optimizing your site pages to make sure they rank for a lot of related terms and in terms creating supporting content that is next to your key content. After you've identified your target keywords, you need to match them to your site pages and identify any gaps. In its simplest form, a keyword mapping is a structure for the keywords you select for targeting that reflects your site structure. Based on the research, the ultimate goal of the map is to help you know where to optimize, what content to create, and where to add new pages to attract more traffic. It's important that you take the time to make sure you are targeting the right pages with the right keywords, and the process outlined in the guide can help you do it right the first time and use it to support your strategy. You need to make sure that the content on your page matches the intent of the searcher. This means taking the time to analyze the pages that rank for your targeting and make sure your content is relevant. Let's say you want to set up term targeting on a national level. You may have defined high search volume and realistic keyword complexity, but if the search engine is producing local results, you won't see yourself in prominent positions. If you don't understand the purpose of the content that Google ranks, you can't guarantee that your content is relevant. Make sure you use HTTPS. There is no excuse for not using HTTPS encryption on your site. If you are still using HTTP, it's time to switch it. You can easily verify that your site is on HTTPS by looking at your browser's address bar. If you see a padlock, you are using HTTPS. If not, then you are not. 
You can quickly identify any existing scan errors through the Google Search Console. Go to the coverage report and you will see both errors and excluded pages, as well as pages with warnings and valid ones. Take the time to fix any errors you find and look more closely at the reason for the excluded URLs. Did you know Google is the most visited site in the world? The number of queries on this search engine reaches 3.5 billion every day. Raise the speed of your site. Slow sites degrade the user experience. In fact, Google recently confirmed an upcoming page update for 2021 that will pay even more attention to user experience as a ranking factor than it does now. You have to make sure your site loads fast and recognize that users keep expecting more. No one expects a slow site. You'll find that slow loading pages are flagged when you run a site audit scan. And you can get more specific with the Google PageSpeed Insight tool. Correct broken internal and outbound links. Non-working links are another signal of a poor user experience. No one wants to click a link and find that it doesn't lead to the page they were expecting. A list of broken internal and outbound links can be found in your site audit report, and you should correct and identify problems by updating the target's URL or removing the link. Make sure your website is optimized for mobile devices. Mobile friendliness is a key factor in Google's upcoming page update, but the real reason you should care so much about making sure your site is mobile-friendly is because as of mid-2019, Google has moved to index for all sites from mobile devices. If you're not mobile-friendly, you'll find that your normal visibility suffers because of this. Check the page depth of your site. Ideally, pages should go no further than three clicks deep into your site. If it does, it's a sign that you need to take the time to rework your site structure to make it flatter. The fact is, the deeper the page, the less likely users or search engines are to find it. You will find pages that require more than three clicks to access clearly highlighted in the problem section of your site audit report. Your site should not send users or search engines through multiple redirects, nor should redirects create a loop. The redirects should simply go from page A to page B. The site audit report will highlight any problems that exist with the redirection chains and loops, and you need to solve them by updating all the redirects in the chain to point the end goal, or by removing and updating the one that causes the loop. Find and fix repetitive, missing and truncated header tags. Optimized header tags are the very basics of SEO. They're often the first thing any search engine optimizer looks at to help a page rank. You see, the title tag tells search engines what the page is about and should be unique. There should be no duplicate title tags and truncated title tags will be cut off in search results. You also need to make sure title tags are not missing. Find and fix repetitive and missing meta descriptions. Although meta descriptions have not been used as a direct ranking factor for many years, they are usually what appears below your site's title tag in search engine results. Simply put, it's your meta description that encourages the user to click on your ad, not someone else's, and can both positively and negatively impact your organic CTR. If you don't have a meta description, Google will display some of the content on your page, but that may include navigation text and other elements, and that will be far from enticing. If you have duplicates, there's a good chance you're not presenting a unique description that encourages clicks. Find and fix some H1 tags. A page's H1 tag is the main title of your content and there should only be one tag on each page. The site audit report will note pages that have more than one H1 tag installed and you should take the time to fix them to make sure that only one tag exists on each page. 
The most common reason why there are multiple H1 tags is that your website logo is enclosed in one as well as the main header on the page. First and foremost, H1 tags should include the main target keyword of the page, so make sure you are tagging the right content. If you don't properly optimize your page titles and meta tags, you're missing out on ranking not only from your main keywords, but also for variants of them. Go to your performance report in Google Search Console and identify keywords on each page that have a significant number of impressions, but few clicks and a low average position. This usually means that your page is considered relevant to the queries and ranks at least somewhat, but you haven't optimized the page by including these variants in your content or tags. So this is an SEO checklist that beginners or more advanced SEOs alike can follow and hopefully find at least a few ways to improve their website optimization. If you have any great steps from the checklist that you use in your workflow, we'd love to know what they are in the comments below this video. Thanks for watching us, check out the channel for new videos.